All right, what a ride today. It was quite the ride. So we were expecting some type of washout early this week, right? And, and a rally uh, to come out of it because we're so far below that eight-day moving average and we got even more below it this morning. Uh, and, it's, and, and, you know, we hadn't seen the big jump in volume yet or the big trading range. Well, we got that today. So big, big type of move. Um, that's great. That's exactly right. Like it's kind of following suit with what we've been talking about. Uh, and now we'll continue. Like today's video, I'll talk about, okay, where do we go from here in the short term? Where do we go from here in the intermediate term? Is this the low point? Are we, are we washed out completely? And here we go uh, to the upside. What do the charts tell us? Um, have they really swung to the upside yet? Like what today would suggest, especially with that long lower shadow. What does that long lower shadow mean? How do we, you know, how does it be, how do we behave when we get these long lower shadows uh, on the markets? These big moves to the downside. So we're gonna break all that down. We're gonna take a look at what's driving the 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 weakness here. Like how did how the different asset classes perform today? What kind of patterns are they showing on their charts? How does that alter or, or impact our expectations? And then we'll take a look at a stock that had a great bounce today. It had the engulfing pattern of engulfing patterns. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to trade that considering, you know, it's kind of following. It's actually been more bearish uh, from a trending standpoint than the market has been. So how do we trade it now that it's got this great bullish pattern? So let's go ahead and get started. Today is Monday, January the 24th, 2022. This is the market outlook from marketscholars.com. My name is David Settle. All right, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500. Uh, there's our rally. So great, great rally off the lows of the day. The lows were way, I mean, look, we actually are still down more than four and a half, five and a half percent below the 30 day moving average, um, but obviously well off of the lows of the day. So tremendous range, almost three times the daily average. So very, very significant kind of washout level range. Uh, obviously getting back up above, um, let's see, just let me activate this actually, activate that, move that down getting back up above the 23% retracement level. So just like that, we are in retracement mode, right? It didn't even take a, a day. Uh, we are, you know, we established a low point. And there, that was a significant low point. We actually stayed down there for a little bit of time today. And it was late uh, that we rallied. You'll see that here in a little bit. So that's why I'm okay to put put that down at the bottom. Short-term sentiment's better, but it's still not good. Like we're, we're not in bullish territory. The near-term near line is not above the 90th percentile in the least bit. But still, it's a good move nonetheless. Um, of course, remember now we have resistance levels. We'll have resistance levels at 44.50. We'll have one up here at 45.90. Uh, so keep in mind that as we rally, not only will we have the moving averages up there, but you'll also have those Fibonacci levels up there too. So that's the S&P 500. Uh, the NASDAQ, of course, it looks very similar. Uh, the NASDAQ made a break below the 23% retracement level. Uh, here, let me actually, sorry, let me activate this one. Uh, made a break below the 23% retracement level on the long-term level. Now you notice the 23% retracement on the on the current drop is on the same exact line. It's crazy how that works, huh? Uh, and then we're back up above it. So again, we're already in retracement mode on the NASDAQ too. But remember, we'll have resistance at these Fibonacci levels in addition to the moving averages that you'll see here in just a second. Uh, the Russell 2000 is even more bullish, right? It actually got a little bit of an engulfing pattern here. Um, and now you can see uh, we got back up above that. There's that long term here. Let me zoom out uh, here. Uh, there was, and I'm going to come right here. So there was the 38% retracement of the intermediate rally uh, that we were kind of st staying sideways on for so long. Uh, you notice we are still below that long term 23%, the orange line, which is the Fibonacci lines from the COVID low point. So remember the other ones, we got below them today and got back above them today. The Russell, we're still not above it, right? So that, that's going to act as a resistance. And of course, if I were to draw the Fibonacci lines on the current um, high point, so that would be up here, the current move down to the low, you can see it also is above its 23% retracement. So uh, we are we are in retracement mode. It, it took it even took a it, it actually happened intraday, um, but very very big ranges, more than two times the average, very big volumes. We'll see here in a second. I mean today was really a, a, a washout day. Um, when you look at the the long term chart, keep in mind though that like to get an upper shadow on the range, we have to trade up to 4602. So we have to go up another. We went up 12 points. On SPX today, we'd have to go up another 200 points to get an upper shadow. So, um, but also keep in mind that next week's uh, bearish candle 
will probably start off at about 44.8. It's going to be the halfway point of the body. So as of right now, we're only one day in the week, of course. But as of right now, it would be starting off at about 44.80 around there. So 70, that's 70 points away from where we're currently at. So that kind of gives you an idea, you know, what as if as we rally potentially tomorrow some more and into Wednesday into the, basically into the FOMC meeting, um, let's see how you know at where we approach to see if we get up to uh, to where next week's candle might be a a transition candle, right? A, a, already a transition. Of course, you got falling PPO. It's still positive, but it's falling. You have a really significantly um, a real significantly large. Um, Hakanyashi candle, some of the biggest ones that we've had. It's actually 5.69 if we round up there. So you can see, obviously, in the, you know these candles were much bigger um, what, during the COVID drop. If you look at outside of COVID, the, that this is about as big as we've gotten. That's how big we got in the fourth quarter of 2018. It's as big as we got in the first quarter. It's as big as we got in 15, 16. We got a little bit bigger in 2011. Of course, there's the credit you know the the bear market but at the beginning of the bear market this is about as big as we got uh, and, and of course the end of that bear market we had you know a washout sale too so it's a pretty decently sized bearish candle the difference between like now and the end of 2018 is the ppo was pretty negative uh in the first part of 2018 it was actually a lot even higher than where it is now in 15 and 16 when we got this low the ppo was already negative so that's that's a little bit of a difference between now and these other times. 2011, you can see the PPO was also, it wasn't negative. If it wasn't negative, it was negative by that week and, and we were really close. So we're still probably a week or two away from getting a, a death cross uh, on these long-term lines. So it's, not, so it's a little different in that regard uh, as to why we, this might not be like a sharp, bat, like the trend, the bearishness might not be done. It'll be, it's done in the short term, but I don't think it's done yet in the intermediate term. Let's take a look at the three green arrow charts, uh, and you'll see we got light pink shading all across the board still. So I mean, as bearish as we, as bullish as we were today, we still have red arrows everywhere. The histogram, the, the MACD histogram looks like it has bottom. Remember, the MACD will usually now bottom next uh, after this. If I look at the two line versions of these charts, so the MACD histogram may be bottoming now. Usually, that bottoms first, and then the MACD itself will bottom very, very soon afterwards. Uh, so we'll see if that ends up being the case. Look at the volume, 252 million shares. Um, very, very significant. Remember, we are still actually, not only are we still below the 8-day moving average on the S&P 500, we're actually still easily below the 200-day. We are that, at the lows of the day today, we were pretty significantly, we were so extremely lower. In fact, I tweeted that out. I tweeted that out here. Um, uh, right here. So at, at the lows of the day today, SPY, uh, was almost 7% below its 8-day moving average. That's a real significant low point. To give you this some context on how low that is, like if I were to bring up uh, the MS PPO, uh, and we'll leave it, uh, we'll put it on how far away we are from the 8-day exponential moving average, and let's get rid of these other indicators for a second. We'll come back to them in just a minute. Um, but So again, like yesterday we closed almost 4%. Today we only closed 2.5%. But we were seven percent, nearly seven percent. Let me give you some context and how significant that is. So that's that's the line where we're at, six point seven. You can see the COVID drop. We were lower, um, but none of these other lines, like fourth quarter two thousand eighteen, um, we closed at that low point. So so we actually got lower than we did at the worst of two thousand and eighteen. And then you look at fifteen and sixteen here. Um, this level, this line. Uh, we got lower below the eight-day moving average. But look what happened. Once we hit that low point, we rallied intraday, kind of like today, and then we made a run all the way up to the eight-day moving average. We actually made a run up to the 17 and then the 32 um, before making a new leg lower. Um, but that's what happened there. And you can see over here, we also got pretty significantly below. Not quite, you know, the, you know not, I don't think we were necessarily 6.7. But again, you see that big, long, lower shadow. We were really low on an intraday basis and then we rallied to close at about two and a half percent very similar to today and then look at what we did we went all the way up to the 8 and 17 so I think that's kind of what we're on now is we're on you know a potential run now again a very similar like when you look at these levels we were below the 200 day moving average there uh, if you look at 15 and 16 we're also below the we were even more below the 200 day moving average than we are right now so keep that in mind like the 30-day still hasn't crossed below the 50 yet. 
like the 8 and 17 day have, but the 30 day hasn't. So I don't think necessarily this is the end of the road. Um, as you can see, like, you know, again, I share with you the, the weekly chart for this. Um, you know, here's the gap between the 50 and the 200 day moving average. We obviously broke below the 30, but I said in the video over the weekend that we're probably going to spend this week and next week trading between um, this 50 and 17 week, probably another week or two before uh, we go into this to to that week. Remember, IWM, we're already into that week, right? As as bullish as today was, this gives you some context. We're already very deep in the middle of that gap, and the 30 day, 30 week barely has just barely crossed below the 50 week. And of course, on a daily basis, the the we've got a death cross going here. Um, and the 50 day has crossed below the point of control. Now the 30 day is about to cross um, below the point of control, even with this engulfing. I think this engulfing is a good short term reversal signal that will get us back up to the eight and potentially 17 day and this 23% retracement. The question will be uh, if we can get through it and stay above it. Uh, that's when you'll feel much better about a trend reversal. Uh, until then, I think, uh, especially considering, you know, again, there wasn't a lot of volume on the way down. There's not a lot of volume on the way back up either, but there is going to be some volume above that, you know, above, like since we broke below these levels, now there's a lot of volume at those levels. Um, and so it's going to it's going to be a pretty significant resistance as we rally back up to these lines here and, and potentially set us up for a really good uh, selling opportunity when that happens. Uh, let's take a look at some of these other oscillators. Here's the DMI. Look at that big break, even with the. Uh, um, big bullish move. We still got to move all the way up to 50 on the negative. So of course, you know, again, just for some context on how bullet, how bearish that is. Uh, in 2020, we got that big at the beginning of the COVID drop. We got that big uh, at the beginning of this 2018 drop. You notice we got that big. You notice these are all at the beginnings of these moves. Uh, at the beginning of 2018, uh, we got a, a drop that's you know up to 50. And then there's your 15 at the beginning of that 15 move. You got to drop up. Uh, and here at the beginning, the second leg, uh, in the early six, late 15, early 16, at the very beginning. So again, we tend to get these moves at the beginning, uh, not at the end, right? I mean, now we might be washing out here on a short-term basis, but that doesn't mean that we're going to now start a new bullish trend. That we can stay down here below these moving averages uh, for a while. We just go up and down, stay down. You can see the RSI and the CCR are still very low. Um, and then if you look at like uh, the trend straight, we are we are below the cloud. The red lines below the cloud, so we're you know 26 days, um, you know from from 26 days prior below the cloud. The the green and blue lines are dropping below the cloud. We have a strong trend. We're below minus five or above 85. So we have a strong trend going on every index uh, on on both of these. Uh, the diamonds were the only one that weren't there, and they're now at intermediate trend levels. Uh, so they're working their way to strong bearish trend levels too. Again, the last time we had, you know, significant long um, bearish trends on here, because usually you don't get very long bearish trends. Uh, 2020 with COVID. There's 2018. You can see we were down for quite a while in the red before we got a new green uh, trend. And then, you know, again, I keep bringing up the same time frames, right? So. Uh, 2000, the end of 2018, then there's 15 and 16. We did have a good bullish trend in between, but we had a really, you know, some pretty strong bearish trends that we haven't matched since. Right, a little bit, you know, there's 2018, a little bit of 2000, early 2018, but besides those, we haven't matched those moves since. Uh, let's take a look at the Bollinger Bands. Uh, we were way below the lower Bollinger Band, way, way, way below the lower Bollinger Band. Remember, we we're also still below the Keltner channel too. Um, so we're still pretty significantly below the Keltner channel. So we still have room to go. But at one point in time today, we were way outside uh, the Bollinger. I mean, that's ex it's hard to stay extremely outside these bands before you make a move. The bandwidth is really strong. You can see the momentum down there at the bottom is still working its way up to the upside. So we're not necessarily bullish here on SPY. You can see, you know, we're, you know, we're not necessarily breaking um, points of control or resistance we have on the queues so we are I mean that's pretty bearish there again it's going to act as a significant resistance on the way back up and of course we also we're outside of the value area on the one-year chart uh, for uh, the Russell 2000 
uh, we are you know still inside a two-year value area but we are inside a pretty significantly large gap of volume here speaking of volume I told you today's volume 252 million the range stay 19 points uh, those are extremes 252 million is well off of the one-year chart uh, for the average right well off the chart uh, 19 points well off the chart we're at 1.84 so we're nearly at that 2% mark today was an extreme washout move uh, so you know I expect that we'll continue the bullishness now it also long lower shadows are very bullish but they also set a range and and a lot of times we trade inside that range so we make a little short-term move up to these resistance levels to these moving averages um, to the, like the 8 to the 17 so we make a run up to these moving averages uh, we hit resistance and we come back down and fill in the range of these long lower shadows whether it's SPY whether it's IWM uh, very good chance that we can come in and fill in through these lows so um, you know they may have set the short-term low I don't know if they've necessarily set the uh, intermediate term low point yet uh, per se I think on the uh, Russell 2000 for an example uh, we're very close to the 38 percent retracement uh, very very close so I think you got a little bit lower left about 187.50 there'll be some resistance at that area um, but that's IWM remember SPY we still haven't even broken the 23 percent line yet um, so it still has you know, good ways to go here um, before we hit you know any long-term support on a Fibonacci basis. So it, it hit the 23% today uh, on the on the low of the day. So you still have about to about 380 before you hit the 38% retracement of this big COVID. You know, so I think that's that's probably the the setup we still have left uh, to do for the large cap indexes. Finally, let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX did jump at the open. We got up to 105%, typical intermediate level, and we dropped back down already. Back, we didn't even finish. We still haven't closed the day above 100% yet. So it kind of shows you where the volatility is at. So I think you still need a day where we really wash out in volatility too, and we haven't done that here. So volatility needs to get up to a point where um, you know it's up to the 115, 120%, 120 between 150, 125% uh, of the VIX of VIX 3M that's when we know that the VIX has peaked. So we got up to almost 40 today to get up to the 105% level, which means 45.50 is gonna be in play by the time, potentially, um, by the time all is said and done here. Um, you know, If not by the end of this week or, ne or early next week, maybe by the end of next week uh, going, into, um, uh, going into the week after. It might be as soon as after this FOMC meeting uh, is over with. So we'll see how the market reacts to you know a very highly anticipated meeting so what do you think do you agree with that uh, technical assessment here do you disagree uh, let me know in the comment section below especially if you disagree what charts or indicators are you looking at that tell you there's a lot more uh, you know bearishness to come or what's telling you that this is it that we've hit the low point and we're ready to move higher that I haven't shared uh, put that in the comment section down below before we look at some other charts, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, mouse over this icon here in the bottom right corner of your screen, hit the red subscribe button that pops out. There's also one down below the video if you're watching us on YouTube. That will notify you when our videos are posted. Also, while you're down there, hit that thumbs up icon. That tells us two things. You liked our video today, you want us to do another video again tomorrow. Quick way to give us feedback if you like our videos. Um, if you don't like our videos, of course, you don't have to click on anything. Also, comment. What did you get out of our videos today? What stood out to you? What questions or comments do you have? Post those in the comment section below. Join our website at marketscholars.com. There's a link popping out up there in the top right corner of your screen. Click on that link to subscribe to our site for free. Follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos from day to day. There's my handle, at DavidSettle42. And join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. All right, if you're watching us on our blog, check out some of these other things over here on the right. Click on the Market Outlook Live icon right here. That takes you to this page. Again, I do these every day. I do the Market Outlook. So at 3.30 Eastern time before the market closes, we get on the page here. Uh, for about 10 15 minutes we take a look at all the old market outlook trades we've done we manage them see if we should stay in them get out of them um, we also put on today's trade idea before the market close that you know that day's trade idea before the market closes so check that out here you can also get to it by coming up to market outlook and clicking on live trade review uh, also you can see our upcoming classes uh, if you click on view more it takes you to our calendar you can see all of our recording classes it goes back three over, almost four years now uh, of recorded classes four years here in March and all of our upcoming classes here as well. Uh, we have 10 a week, 10 different uh, trading rooms a week. 
Uh, if you come down below uh, the video, uh, click on this heart icon that takes you to this, opens up a new tab, hit that like button. Also click on this thumbs up icon, it opens up another new tab, hit that like button. Again, the, or this one, the more you do that, it really helps us get our content out to all of our followers. So we always ask uh, for it. Uh, it also benefits you because Twitter and Facebook promote content in your timelines from the accounts that you engage with the most. So we try to make it really easy for you to engage with us right here while you're watching. All right, let's take a look at what's driving the price action today. Look at how we started the day today. So the dollar was up, gold was up, bonds were up. I mean, this is a trifecta of safe havens. When all three of these things are moving together, that is about the, that is the trifecta. Uh, and then you can see Qs were down big, almost pretty much 5%. S&P was down. Small caps weren't down as much, but remember, they've been selling off a little bit more. Uh, the emerging markets were down big. Developed markets were down big. Uh, real estate was down big. Everything. Commodities were down uh, more than 1.5%. Everything was down. High yield bonds were down. Uh, then, then we all rallied. We all rallied. And bonds, which were strong up till the you know, earlier part of the day, they finished down. Uh, they did not like sm the U.S. equities really outpaced international. International equities had a hard time rebounding as strong. Remember, their markets are closed. So that's probably one reason why any late day moves won't be as big. And these international areas uh, most most of the time your dollar stayed up strong gold also stayed up strong so interesting that we had these big moves and the only asset class that um, the only asset class that started that that was weak by the end of the day was long-term bonds in fact interestingly enough that's one of the reasons why you know you, you take you saw that yields had the yield spread was falling uh, if I go back to the 10-year yield here um, the 10-year yield was down um, yesterday, Friday, going in, and then was down again today, and obviously just a little bit of a rebound. The TLT is a um, the TLT is actually a factor of these long-term uh, yields, the 30-year yield. And you can see it rebounded actually a lot more, uh, so it's actually still up above the 200-day moving average uh, after getting up above there before. Remember, this reflects global economic or U.S. economic growth expectations more so than Fed policy. Fed policy is more short term. A 10 year is still influenced, uh, but once you get out to the 20, 30 years, very little influence from Fed rate hike. And we also you see you're above the 17 day moving average, even though the MACD is below its moving average. So we are in bullish convergence mode. You know, we've had the big push. The MACD histogram peaked. The MACD itself peaked. Now we're converging. So now we're just going to slow down. And see what happens as we kind of base form a basing pattern or, or some kind of uh, consolidation pattern. Then it's a matter of will it be a reversal pattern or will we just continue this bullishness uh, up to the upside, right? Your TNX is obviously well up above the 200 day. The 30 day is crossed above the 50. I mean, the TNX has been really bullish, but again, it's also in bullish convergence mode. It's had this MACD histogram already peaked a week ago. Now it looks like the MACD itself has peaked. Uh, now we're in convergence mode. And so we'll see. You know how this consolidation pattern ends up looking like um, by the time all is said and done. The euro US dollar um, is kind of flat. We've had this little drop, um, but you notice again, we are all, all these moving averages, not the 200, but all the other ones the 817, the uh, 30, the 50, the, and the 30 is above the 50, just barely crossed above the 50. The 8, just though, is barely crossed below the 17, so you got a little small MACD, you know, a little bit of a bearish divergence forming. But you notice like once we got below the 17, we haven't really extended below that. We're just kind of like flirting with this 50 day, kind of just trading inside the gap. Very small gap, mind you, but we've been very small ranges. So watch for a big break here pretty soon uh, from the Euro US dollar. My expectation is that we'll break up uh, to the upside and work up towards the 200 day moving average. Again, that in my opinion would be more in line with weakness in the markets, more so than strength because the dollar has been so strong uh, during the market rally, right? Gold, obviously, you can see the 30 days crossing above the 50. The, they're both are above the 200. We're above the point of control. We're flirting with the top of the value area. So gold looks like it's trying to really get a good kind of long-term breakout pattern going after being so sideways for so long, right? This is, you know, you look at the uh, trend strength indicators for gold, and we've been uh, so noisy, right? No trend going on. And if I look at the weekly chart, uh, you can see it's even more... Uh, uh, you can tell even more like really since 2021 we had you know strong bullish trend going in 2020 uh, coming out of COVID 
And then we started to consolidate. We lost the trend there. We had a little bit of some bullishness going, a little bit of bearishness going once we got below that weekly cloud. But then we've been sideways ever since, right, right above that 38% retracement of this big bullish move we had. Uh, but we've been unable to get above the 23% and really get going again. Uh, again, I expect that that will be the case uh, eventually. I think, well, you know, this has been one big, long, protracted consolidation. Um, but if we break the 38, then obviously that would be uh, really bullish for risk appetite, in my opinion. Also be really bullish for the dollar. And uh, I think it's the other way around. I think we'll be, um, you can see the red line's actually above the price. just barely, but it's above the price. So I think, I think there's, the breakout will actually occur up here. Uh, to the upside here let's get rid of this one so you can see what i'm talking about that long term chart we get above that which will be above the cloud you'll probably get a new trend sorry but we've gone a full almost a full year without anything um especially anything like significant like anything above 80 and above five like this one got up to 75 uh and up to, to three so we had a you know a brief intermediate trend going there uh, we got it. We had a very, very brief intermediate bearish trend going, but then that, but then that was it, right? Since then, I mean, that wasn't even much of anything. So really, since what April of last year, we've been very sideways, stuck between the 38 percent and the 23. A little bit of a false breakout, uh, fake out move, but sideways ever since. On gold, Bitcoin obviously has been in the uh, uh, news. So it obviously did break its 23% retracement level on the long-term chart. Uh, we are just barely getting below the cloud. Uh, it's Ichimoku Lab. We don't have enough data yet to get these tr these indicators down here at the bottom. Uh, so you can see like things are really getting uh, bearish for Bitcoin on the long. Well, obviously we got the death cross on the 30 below the 50. The 30 now is below the 200. We are below the point of control on the one-year basis. Uh, the 50 has not crossed below the 200 yet, but you would expect it would. Uh, long lower shadow today, but you know again we're still well below the eight-day moving average. Uh, if you look at the weekly version of this chart, um, we talk about filling in the gap right between the 50 and the 200 day. You can see there's still plenty of room to the downside to that 78% retracement before we even touch the 200 week uh, exponential moving or simple moving average. So a lot of opportunity for some bearishness here. Uh, for um, Bitcoin still left to go and, and again we look at Bitcoin as a reflection of you know where of, of risk appetite on the speculative end of the scale of the risk scale you can see all the bearishness look at these developed markets Japan Germany the US um, France uh, all down here Canada Russia still struggling of course with the news with the Ukraine news uh, Korea um, a measure of a proxy for global global growth expectations but look at china holding up really well brazil holding up really well so a lot of these bigger emerging markets india india kind of matching what you're seeing a lot of these others so everything it looks pretty similar outside of china and brazil but again they've been so bearish uh, that they've had they've had the better margin of safety continue to have um, the better margin of safety in fact china is in a relatively really good position to exacerbate the selling um, by being a lot more restrictive themselves to really consolidate um, their, you know, their risk appetite over there, which they have shown the the ability to do and the willingness to do, uh, even if we haven't necessarily here. Um, but that could have a really big impact on us because we don't have the same margin safety China does. China's already been pretty bearish, and um, we have much much higher, more than two two times the valuations of stocks over there in that area. Let's take a look at the uh, sector grid. So give me one second here uh, to look at the sector rotation. Uh, so bear with me. We'll look at the uh, comparison first and take a look at how things performed here today. Uh, so let's go here. You can see uh, XLK, XLY were the lows at the bottom, right? They were the they fell down five percent or four and a half percent or more, up to five percent. All these other cyclical areas here, staples, utilities held their value better. By the end of the day, they were on the bottom end of the scale, healthcare as well. Discretionary is up more than a percent. XLK was up a half a percent. Communication services was up three quarters of a percent. So it was these QQQ names that had been the biggest um, uh, winners uh, so far. Uh, if you keep in mind that, if we take a look here at you know, how things have been performing since the beginning of the year, right, and really we kind of peaked um, we were actually pretty bullish that first day. Uh, so let's actually start on the Tuesdays when things started to 
kind of get a little bit more bearish. If you take a look at uh, this chart here, you can see we kind of peaked. Uh, we had a bullish day right out, and then it was been since that day that we've been bearish. Uh, so when I look at that, you can see uh, XLK and XLY have been down 15%, so hence why they rallied as much as they did. Um, not necessarily that the market is like, okay, here we are on a bullish trend, but they were so extremely oversold. But look at energy. Since that same time frame, energy, financials were doing okay. They've kind of hit the fan here lately. But energy is up 6% during that same time frame. Staples Utilities really holding their value uh, well there. Let's take a look at some of these charts really quickly. The new highs, new lows index, which hit nearly 2,000 um, on Friday, hit 2,600 2, today. I mean, geez, Louise, that's a very, very low level. Uh, again, for context and how low, we did get lower in, in March of 2000. Uh, we got about to 2,500 at the worst of the 2018. We didn't hit, we, 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 got, we didn't hit 2,500 on either one of those lows in 2015. And then 2011, we barely got over 2,000. Uh, at the worst of the financial crisis, we were over 3,000 a couple of times, and we didn't hit 2,500 in any of these periods at the beginning. So that just kind of shows just how bearish we are. Remember, there's a reason. Uh, from a gamma exposure standpoint, uh, we've been really unloading a lot of the exposure. It, has, it looks like it has been updated, so here we are. There's the dark pull buying. The dark pull buying, that when the blue line's way low, that means there's not a lot of buying going on here. Um, at these lows yet so this isn't you know we're not at the lows right usually you hit these low points near market tops not near you can see here you hit it right before that market top you hit this one over here before the market top in 2018 you hit a couple of these over here before this market top in March of this year so that's usually when we hit these are at market tops not nearly at the bottom so um, we're not getting a lot of gamma exposure uh, the dark from a dark pool standpoint. Now we're we're also not getting a lot of retail buying either, and that's showing up in your put call ratio. Now look at the put call ratio jumping up as high as it has. Uh, looks like it's updated through Friday, but now we're two standard deviations away from the three-year mean. Um, but if you look at the five-year chart to kind of get an idea, that was that's about as high as what we got before. Um, now the lows were much lower that we've been coming off of, but. But again, look at 2020, how high we got. Look at the end of 2018, how high we got. Look at a couple of the intermediate declines in 2019. We got all the way up to, to this uh, three standard deviation line. We're still not quite there. So it kind of shows you, you know, that we've had a lot of call buying. Um, all this, uh, if you look at, you know, how much call buying we've had, this orange line here, this is the measure of how much call buying there's been. That's why the put call ratio is so low here. Um, so a lot of that exposure is unwinding, as you can see over here. It's really, really unwinding, and that's putting a lot of pressure uh, on the stock markets. Uh, if you look at the trend today, uh, which kind of measures um, um, the, the declining volume uh, versus advancing volume relative to advancers versus decliners, not as bad, right? We are below the moving, but the average is just barely getting the one, the 20-day average. We usually kind of hit the lows when this average is higher, like at one and a quarter, 1.2, one and a quarter. So we still got some room to go uh, there on that one. The uh, how many stocks are above the 250 day move, uh, 50 day moving averages? Usually, again, like we will really bottom out here as we are, you know, hitting after we hit the lows. You can see we bottom out very, very quickly after we hit the lows. So we need to really, really watch this soon to see, you know, when we bottom out because we're not below that moving average yet. So we're not really as bearish yet uh, as it could be. And then the skew, uh, the skew is still above 1.3 and at six. So it's still above one and a quarter um, or 125. So it still means the market is still concerned about a big move from today going forward, right? Uh, even though we've already experienced a pretty decent sized move, uh, the market still concerned about a two standard deviation move. Once you get below 120, 115, like you saw over here in, in the COVID, uh, if you go out a little bit further, you go out to that 2018, uh, 2011 time frame or 15, 16, you can see we got below 120 both those periods. 2018, we got below 120, 115. So we're still at 136. We are hardly washed out yet. Uh, the market's still uh, concerned. As, as you saw with the VIX, the VIX hasn't spiked yet. 
which means that not only is the VIX high, um, not only is the VIX high here, but also the that back month, the VIX 3M is still pretty high too. The market's still concerned about the bigger moves, not the more immediate uh, moves, which is what happens, you know, near low points when the market gets way too concerned about more near-term moves. That usually marks the lows. All right, with our uh, trade idea of the day, I wanted to take a look at Foot Locker. Let's take a quick look at Foot Locker here. Look at this big bullish move. We had big engulfing pattern. I like, engulfed a lot of moves. We got dark green shading the green line. The momentum line spiked up uh, to a very to extreme levels. You would that would suggest that the near term line is about to follow suit. Especially if it gets above 90, that would be a really good sign for the near term line. Uh, dark green shading the green line, 8% above the 30 day moving average. So it's hardly like a like a you know bear that's dipping its toe um, up there. If you take a look at the three green arrow charts uh, for Foot Locker. Uh, you can see three green arrows here, um, significant amount of volume, uh, so very, very good sign from that perspective, uh, from a bullish uh, standpoint. If you look at the two line versions of this chart, uh, we are breaking above the 50 day moving average too. Now we're below the value area, so there's going to be some tough sledding uh, going forward to the upside. There's, you can see all the volume resistance, the value area will act as resistance, but the MACD is positive, so it kind of relieves a lot of the bearish pressure. Uh, that the stock had. You can see the stock had a very strong bearish trend. It's consolidated that trend. Uh, when you look at the trend strength indicator, uh, again, we had a very strong bearish trend going. It, we've consolidated that trend. We've got actually a little weak bear, bullish trend, though you had the, the Ichimoku cloud sitting on top of us for resistance too. Um, if you look at, excuse me, the um, RSI and the CCI, Again, we had a really bearish trend going. We've hit some higher lows here, and now we're got, we're up to bullish levels above 60, above 200. So, so again, you know, we have a lot of resistance that will really put a lot of pressure on the upside for the stock. But it looks like the downside uh, pressure has been relieved. Relieved. So, uh, when I think about doing a trade here, then I think about looking at um, selling an iron condor spread. So, if I sell uh, here the 42. Go for the low 20s, 4240, and then come up here and sell the 50 and 52. Um, when we were first looking at our market outlook live, we weren't so this wasn't so bullish. We weren't as close to the 30 there. Uh, we could do the 51, 53 uh, now that things have kind of moved here going into tomorrow. Um, but that kind of gives you an idea. Again, it's a relatively low delta. We were going for a 65 cent credit uh, on our trade when we were looking at it uh, during the market outlook live video. You set your slices to break even. You set that slice up under the chart. And so you notice here, uh, when I look at this, here, let's go to the Bollinger Bands on Foot Locker. We are now not in the lower, like the very, very low bandwidth. And you can see breaking out the upside, but you see all the resistance above us. So the lower break even is at these lows. Great. That's where there's some going to be some lows there anyway. Um, but the upper break even is up into the value area up above this volume node so you know we're going to have some pretty significant resistance up here great great move today you know if we didn't have so much volume above us if the market posture itself was more bullish i'd be looking at more of a bullish trade kind of a long-term um, call option type of a trade but considering the market posture and considering the uh, the technical and the environment here you know i like the bullish now i like the fact that there is some bullish potential and in the the bearishness is you know kind of done but that I like it for this iron condor spread to take, try to take advantage of that. So that's going to be our trade idea uh, for today that will set in here for tomorrow morning. All right, that does it for today. You've heard from me now. Now I want to hear from you. Use that link popping out in the top right corner of your screen. That takes you to our Market Outlook forums. Open up any new thread with any questions or comments you have. Reply to anybody else's uh, threads. And let's keep this conversation going between videos. As always, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, also to our website at marketscholars.com. Hit that thumbs up icon. Like us on Twitter and Facebook as well. Comment on the video. Have a great rest of your Monday night, everybody. And we'll see you all next time.